Okay, and you're back with another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. First off, I'm going to apologise about the terrible low quality sound. I don't know what's causing that, but at least it's still listenable. I'll have to go in and figure out why it's doing that, but anyway... Today, I'm going to be building another tester coil circuit, and if it works, hopefully it's going to produce a nice flame-like arc instead of little purple sparks. I have no idea how it's going to work. Now, I got sent some schematics the other day. Now, let me just see if I can find it. For some reason, it's opened it in paint. I shouldn't have done that. Um, ah, here we are. Here's one. Is the one I was going to show you. Now this is another vacuum tube tester coil circuit. And this is what I'm going to build today. And then later on in another video I'm going to add the modulation circuit. But I think if I can get this working today and see what kind of results we get from it, then I'll go ahead and build the rest of the circuit. The only problem is I need a power supply that can do 800 volts. Um, I don't think that's going to be too hard. Okay, well, good news, I fixed the sound. So you can actually understand what I'm saying now. Anyway, regarding that 800 volt power supply, well, I've already made a start. Now, by my calculations, I'm only going to get about 750 volts out of this power supply, which is a little bit short of that 800 volts that we need, but I think it'll still work. So anyway, let me just explain what we've got here. Got transformer. Uh, really, really ancient transformer. This actually came out of a valve tape recorder. And I've connected the output to this voltage doubler circuit. Now, I really need capacitors of about 400 volts or more. Unfortunately, I don't have those. So what I've done is I found four identical capacitors. I know these two look different from these two, but trust me, all four of those capacitors are 470 microfarad, 200 volt capacitors. So I'm basically using these two as one capacitor, these two as one capacitor, and of course put resistors across each capacitor to make sure that the voltage across all of them stays the same. And I've also got some rectifier dies here for the other part, another part of the circuit which I'm going to do. And I've got these two transformers here which are going to provide, well, that's going to be for a 350 volt supply. I'm going to use these two transistors here, I mean these two transformers here back to back. So I'm going to put one here, and one here. So mains goes into this one, gets changed to about 12 volts, then 12 volts goes into this one and gets turned back into mains voltage. Then that's going to be rectified with these diodes and this capacitor. And that 350 volts is going to be for another part of the circuit, which I will get into much later. But now, but for now, I'm just going to plug this in and test the voltage across each of these capacitors to make sure that none of them are being overdriven. Okay, I've got the meter across the first capacitor. I'm now going to plug it in, see what voltages we get. All right, we've got about 180 volts in that capacitor. That's good. Of course, I didn't realize that the meter was out of the shop, but anyway, let's test what we've got in the next capacitor along. It should be about the same. Okay, we've got about 183 volts in that one, so it's a little bit more than what we had before, but that's not going to be too much of a problem. All right, now we'll test these two capacitors here and make sure they've got a good voltage in them. Not too high or not too low. That's what we want. Mind you, if something goes bang and then fizz, we'll know what's happened. Okay, that one has 184 volts. So we'll just need to test this one here. Okay, and it's probably not the best idea to do this while the capacitors still have a bit of charge in them, but I'm just trying to be quick here. Right. Okay. So, last capacitor. 185. But none of them are over that 200 volt limit, so that's good. Now, I would try to measure the voltage between here and here with my meter, but I don't really want to risk blowing my meter 
even though it can measure up to a thousand volts. Anyway, from those tests, we have about 182 volts on average in each of those capacitors. So let's find out what our output voltage of this little multiplier is. I'm going to multiply that by 4 because we've got 4 capacitors and we have about 728 volts. And I think that's going to be plenty enough. Okay, let's test the 350 volt or whatever this is going to give out power supply. Got the two transformers wired back to back. Bridge rectifier and the capacitor. So let's see. I've no idea what voltage we'll get out of this. So let's see. All right, we're up to about 320 volts. So again, that's a little bit short of the voltage I want, but I don't think that's going to make too much of a difference. Of course, now I've got to wait for this capacitor to discharge because I've got nothing to discharge it with. Yeah, that's one serious looking power supply. We got a high voltage bit here, and we got a really high voltage bit here. And I've even put a couple of components from that schematic I showed you earlier on here because it's going to be easier to put them there. Okay, well, I've built it. Well, most of it. And it works. Not much of a flame, though. So let's get some real flames. I want flames! Alright, stop. Okay, I've got to record this whole bit all over again. Because I just spent a whole eight minutes describing the circuit, not realising that the microphone wasn't even switched on, so I was going... And you couldn't hear a word of what I was saying. But anyway, as you saw in the previous bit in this video, it works. And I cannot believe it works. Because I don't even know how it's supposed to work. But it does. And I just took a reading on the oscilloscope over here. With a little piece of wire connected it to act as an antenna to pick up the output from this coil. And I found out that this goes at roughly 6 megahertz which is pretty high. I don't know how good this tube actually is at frequencies that high, but it seems to be handling it okay. The only trouble is, I don't know, when I build the mod audio modulation of this circuit, I don't know what I'm going to do about recording that, because as soon as I turn this on, you cannot hear a word of what I'm saying. See, I'm talking right now and you just cannot hear anything. Yeah, my microphone doesn't like that. I had to do quite a bit of tinkering to the circuit to make it work. Because when I originally powered this up, everything outside of the power supply was wrong. My resistors were wrong, my inductor was wrong, and my coil was wrong. I originally wanted to use this coil, but that's not an option. Got absolutely nothing out of that. So I tried changing the resistors because all I was getting was a couple of very hot resistors. So I decided to change that to 20 ohm with bigger resistors instead of 200 ohm with small resistors. Still didn't do anything. Changing the inductors to these still didn't do anything. Then I changed the coil to this one which I just had laying around and it actually did something. I've got about one minute. I got a it worked for about one second and then stopped. However, I made this coil with just ordinary insulated wire. As you can see, probably tell, I use many, many different lengths of wire, which explains all the different colors. And what do you know? It works. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, I'm rabbiting on again. I haven't even gone through the circuit yet. So anyway, I will just go and do that right now. 
I've got the positive of the power supply going into this microwave oven capacitor, which I'm using in place of those three 100 nanofarad capacitors. Then from there, it goes into these two resistors, which make up 20 ohms. And then into these two inductors. Now, they're both 330 microhenry. So I've put them together in parallel for 165, which I think is a good compromise because one, one of these schematics I saw had a 100 microhenry inductor and the other had a 200 microhenry inductor. So I think 165 is a good compromise between the two. Anyway, from there, goes into the plate of this valve and also into this capacitor and then into the bottom of this coil and the top of this coil is connected to the pin and the cathode of this valve is connected to ground then we've got our feedback which is three quarter turn of stiff wire and that goes through here into this capacitor and then into the control grid of the valve and the control grid of the ground is also connected to ground through this 39k resistor and in place of the modulation circuit I just have this resistor connecting the second grid the screen grid to the 300 volt supply through this 27k ohm resistor and, I, and that gives me about 90 volts on that grid which seems to work reasonably well and for the filament well rather than whipping out another transformer I have just connected that up to my regulated power supply I'm giving it the 40 volts that way. And of course, a couple of capacitors connecting each end of the filament to ground just to filter out any nastiness that might have gone through. Anyway, before I'm gonna before anyway, before I do any kind of modulation circuit, and this video is getting too long already, I might need a bit of a stronger transformer. I mean, this ancient transformer from 1960. Although it still works well, I don't think it's strong enough for this circuit because if we take a look on the meter when I run this... Sorry about any loud buzzing that might have produced, but you can see it pulled the voltage down to about 450. So I might need to replace that with a much stronger transformer. And also... Any advice on what the ideal coil for this would be would be really appreciated, like what kind of wire I should use, what size of coil, what sort of diameter I should use, how many windings I should use, and things like that. In standard wire gauge, please, because I don't use American wire gauge here. Anyway, this video is getting really long. I've rabbited on for even longer than I was last time, so I'm going to have to go now and... Until next time, goodbye.